Hi, Nancy Spears with Gen Connect U. And today I have been waiting on this call actually, or this conversation with Kathy Allen uh, for weeks because um, she is um, one of our most popular authors when it comes to the subject of leadership because her view on leadership and her life study on leadership is, um, is it's really unbelievable in terms of just a different viewpoint because she looks at leadership from a living system point of view. And um, I'm um, pleased to introduce Dr. Kathy or Kathleen Allen. Hi, Kathy, how are you? I am wonderful, thanks Nancy, great to see yeah. you today. Great to see you as well. So Kathy has a blog that's global and I was asking her before we got on the chat, um, we're seeing so much international um, response to her courses. She has two courses with us on Gen Connect. The first one was Leading from the Roots and where we really just got into the basics of her studies. And then uh, there was so much to tap into her wisdom about that we asked her to please do another course with us. And so she just uh, published a course with us called How to Lead with the Living Systems Framework. People are seeking another way. They're thinking there's got to be another way than um, the way we've been running organizations all this time. And uh, when you speak with a different voice, and my voice in particular is informed by nature, and most people have some direct experience with it. So the um, it it is a way to help us reimagine organizations and organizational leadership. Brilliant. So, um, what what provoked you to, or what was the aha moment that enabled you to connect the dots of uh, leadership with with your study of nature? I think it actually goes back to being a kid and um, loving being outside. And then having two parents, one, my mom was a wonderful gardener. And so she always, um, you know, enlisted her kids to help in the garden, in the garden. And then my dad was a business owner, entrepreneur, and he was really great at developing people. So for some reason, growing things in the garden and developing people came together for me. And then as I built my career, I just realized that how how um, these ideas that um, of being more connected to nature could apply to be more connected in our workplaces and more relational. And that worked for me professionally in my higher ed career. And it worked significantly with my, um, my clients in um, nonprofits and foundations and startups and growing businesses and entrepreneurs. So all of those, uh, they were all seeking another way to think about leadership. That, that's the common three theme. And they all found me for some reason or other to help them do that, to invent a different way to lead in their organizations. Can you give us some examples yeah. of uh, how nature informs us um, in a new way to lead? Well, the, the shift from thinking of our organizations and the people in them as objects or machines to uh, seeing our people as human beings alive, living, breathing, creating, self-organizing, purpose-driven, having a degree of sovereignty. Uh, those things are antithetical to the structures and systems that we've built up in our organizations. Most of our organizations came into being when we were falling in love with machines. And so it shouldn't be a surprise to us that we created our organizations in more mechanistic like frameworks. So we built HR processes that were about control and um, direction and uh, typical top down leadership, uh, which is actually the kind of serial connections that machines use. If you press this button, the the uh, engine will turn on or whatever, right? So we recreated our organizations in that light, but um, we also had problems that happened from that kind of choice. We, uh, we can't get people to authentically engage. We can't get them to give us their, um, all of their creative energies. We uh, struggle with uh, innovation and creating innovative cu cultures within our organizations. What we don't understand that is that it goes back to how we're thinking about the organization in the first place, which is when you think about an organization as a machine, 
organizations don't innovate, they don't evolve, they don't self-organize, they don't create, they don't engage. And, uh, but living systems do all the time. So when we shift to a living system, what we get is a totally different organizational culture. And it's a culture that we need and we're thriving, uh, striving for because we're our world's becoming more complex and dynamic. And if our organizations can't adapt to that, then we're in trouble. As the last two years of the pandemic has reminded us, adaptation is the thing that will help us thrive and uh, survive these kind of major disruptions that are going on. When you garden, you prepare the soil. You're creating conditions that you hope the seeds will take root in. And then you plant the seeds. You select the seeds and you plant the seeds but the seeds self germinate, they germinate on your own. So you're not out there in the garden supervising uh, whether the seeds are growing or not. And then eventually a shoot comes up and your question is what neat resources and nutrients, rain or uh, whatever can I do I need to help this, this little green shoot that's coming up to grow, expand, um, eventually bloom, and eventually get pollinated and eventually, you know, bear fruit and then do it all again the following year, right? So that is a relationship to a living system. Gardening, you know, we, we think that we're supposed to drive change down through our organizations, but nature and gardening would suggest that maybe we should be thinking about growing change in this beautiful garden that we have called a living system in our organization. Yeah, that's and I want to let the audience know that the course is just chocker full of this beautiful imagery, along with graphics that you know are um, make it so implicit um, in terms of what what your study is and what your teachings are and what the results can be. So I do encourage people to look at that because it's it, it really I just love it. How would you still help a company, or how would nature inform a company on how to align um, so that it's it's organized, it's just not chaotic mm -hmm. with the shift. Yeah, so this is another beautiful shift between me machines or mechanistic frameworks and living system frameworks. So in a mechanistic framework, the way we align is literally by lining up all of the bolts and the nuts and the screws and the systems. So we have leverage points in the system. But in nature, um, it's a very dynamic, complex, interdependent system just like the rest of the world is right now. So it's not like we're gonna go back to a more simplistic time. And uh, in nature, alignment is actually driven on two frameworks. One is, is it's driven on, on a very powerful purpose. So uh, in nature, that purpose would be to create conditions conducive to the life of future generations. How beautiful is that? And then it, it uses self-organization to basically unleash self-organization in service of that purpose. And that's what's powerful in nature in the design. And then the third thing it does, it creates all of these feedback loops to let you know whether you're aligned with purpose or not. And the feedback loops either reinforce uh, the direction that you're going or they dampen it down in some way, shape or form. So in nature, it's a very light kind of supervisory frame. There's not a CEO and a board uh, hanging out trying to figure out how to make sure nature's working and is aligned and on task. Nature is a regenerative system and it has regenerated five times from five mass extinctions. Life is still here, so it's successful in its design. We as organizational leaders would love to have organizations that were able to regenerate themselves, were able to innovate and adapt and um, continue to thrive 100 years from now. But our leadership structure and thinking of organizations as non-living systems hinder those aspirations. But if we shift to a living system, then we look to nature because it's the longest running regenerative system we have to learn from. Well, those are great tips for not just companies, but life in general. And and um, one of the uh, questions that came through was actually a statement, which I think we should close the uh, session with that because it's so great. 
and then we're all going to take a walk um, and um, really digest uh, this conversation. But um, uh, a gentleman, Martin Murphy, says, as usual, Kathy is both profoundly insightful and incisive. Mm -hmm. so, um, Thank you, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> <Good term. laughs> relational wealth. Penny, right? Penny Ellis just put that in. I love the relational wealth. You know, we have to start seeing the wholeness of our system. Mm -hmm. Every time we prioritize a part, our, the system becomes weaker. Mm -hmm. Every time we make decisions based in the whole, our systems become more sustainable, regenerative, and powerful in a in a creating conditions conducive to future generations kind of way. Well, I, I have um, total optimism because when we have people like you in the world to keep us, you know, in alignment <laughs> and um, to really um, understand what's important and and just to be aware. Mm -hmm. um, there's hope. So yeah. I'm so grateful for you. There are reasons to hope. I think a whole bunch of people, millions of people around the world intuitively lead this way already. They just yeah. don't have the language for it. And so my work, my voice, my perspective is really just um, uh, giving them language to understand why their work is so impactful and powerful. And um, reinforce that what they're doing in their that their intuition is telling them to do in, in organizations matters. And uh, it is making our world better. Well, I can't thank you enough, not only for the session today, but for all the work and um, for doing the courses with us, of course, but more just in general for the massive impact you're making um, in the world and in corporate America. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thanks again. Thanks. Wonderful Thanks. To be here.